There's nothing like going on a holiday with your best friend. You gotta have fun. <laughs> you just gotta. There are very few people who know you more. You are adorable. We gotta put it up. That's why Andy's trusted Hamish to plan his activities. What is that? And Hamish has trusted Andy to do the same. Ah! Now, Every day, they'll take it in turns. Would you like to make five million dollars today? Yeah. To reveal what adventure is planned for the other. So this feels like you've picked something you really want to do. No. And together, oh! they'll create oh! their perfect holiday. It was back on a plane to a whole new country. Then a car ride where I completed an easy Sudoku in under a minute. Well done, Ham. Thanks, man. And after four hours, we pulled into Nordic, Canada, a small town near pretty much nothing, but it was the perfect place to start our next adventure. Well, I know Andy's in his room because his car's here. <laughs> it's a classic use of the environment. <laughs> mail, man. <laughs> ah, it's so exciting getting mail. Come with me, my boy, as we spend the night deep in the wild Canadian wild. I said wild twice. No, it's just all part of the cadence. We'll meet a guy called Todd, then capture a beast. Don't be scared, sweet child. This beast's shoe size will eclipse ours if we were to compare. Also, side note, don't panic, but there is a moderate chance of attack by bears. Yes. That's not... Okay. Forget about that for a sec. Yeah. So, What's the author of the clue trying to say when he says the shoe size would eclipse ours? Is he trying to say that this beast has a big foot? Is this beast some sort of big foot? <laughs> what? what? Oh. I don't like this stuff. No, no, we're not wasting... I've met a guy not... called Todd. He reckons he knows where Bigfoot is. Todd has spent 20 years looking for Bigfoot. And, unlike Andy, he even has his own Netflix documentary about his research. This was going to be great. <sighs> it's going to be a waste of time. So, we hopped in our trusty rental, driver's are on this side, oh, yeah. and set off into the Canadian wilderness. Has he seen Bigfoot before? He says yes several times. He'll tell us about it. Has he got any evidence? Look, at, look at where we are, though, Ando. I mean, are you telling me someone knows every square inch of these woods? Anything's possible out there. OK. About two hours up the road, I had one more surprise for Andy. Something entirely legal in Canada that I knew would make him a little bit uncomfortable. I got you some marijuana. <laughs> got your name on it there. What are you doing? Andy, it's legal here. I'm not. This is, we're not. I know it's legal. It's completely legal. This is, this is like carrying around a big tea bag in Canada. Oh, God. Up to 30 grams is legal. I got you 29.5. You know why I got it in a clear bag? Because I thought it would be fun. You can wear this on the plane. You can actually fly domestically with this around your neck. Completely legal. I'm not going to do that. It would be great. If we see a Bigfoot, or convincing enough evidence of Bigfoot, I'll fly with that around my neck. Great. We had a deal, and suddenly I wanted to see a Bigfoot more than anything. And another 45 minutes up the road, we finally met up with the guy that could make that happen. Todd. Todd! At least I hope so. This is so weird if that's not Todd. Good day. It is Todd. He got a yes. nod. We got a Todd nod. I'm Hamish. Hamish, nice How are you, Todd? Hamish. I've been hey, talking Todd. to you. This is I'm Andy. Andy. Andy, nice to meet you. Hey, thanks so much for taking the yeah. time. Yeah. This yeah. is unbelievable. This is crazy. This is where I would live if I was... A Sasquatch? A Sasquatch. <laughs> a really excited <laughs> species. But, I mean, first up, do we call him Sasquatch? Do we call him Bigfoot? Sasquatch. 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 Yeah, right. OK. Because is Bigfoot, like, derogatory? Uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, right. The natives find it that way. You went past the reserve. So right. it's more of like, there's more to be than my feet, guys. Right. So it's a bit right. of like, hey, the rest right. of me is up here. Right, right. Gotcha. So, yeah. So the natives, have they sighted Bigfoot before? Sorry, Sasquatch before? What All did we time? just say? It's <laughs> insensitive. Yeah. When, Sorry. You, when you go to the reserves, yeah. a Sasquatch sighting is like seeing a bear or something. And it's so it's here. It's in these parts. There's no doubt at all. And who, how who big is, are they? Uh, nine feet tall, 800 plus pounds. Oh, yeah, huge. They're primates, right? Yeah. So they're the only bipedal primate on the planet besides us. Bipedal? Bipedal, they walk right. on two feet. <laughs> Sorry. No, not two, two, yeah, two. bipedal. Sure. Two feet, walks okay. on two feet. Pedal. Pedal. Yeah, and you can tell knuckle walkers. the bipedal ones, it's like track, track, and then like two dragon. <laughs> yeah. So we've got evidence on this hand, mm. the actual Sasquatch on this hand. Yeah. Evidence percentage-wise for one night? 100%, I'll show you. 100% percent evidence. Yeah, you'll see things that just Lo can't be explained. By live the Sasquatch, give me your best percentage for one night. 5%. Can we do seven? In one night. 
Seven sold. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do it. We were going to a spot where we'd be able to show Andy stuff to get him 100% convinced that Sasquatch exists. And within minutes... Actually, there's a track right there. Bang, footprint. What's this? Is this a Sasquatch track? Yeah, it's, it's, it's from last year. That's a year old? Yeah, it's a female, too. See how slender how the foot is? Slender foot. The foot is way too slim. Yeah. But it's like a... It, if she, About if, 15 inches and not she, wide. If she stepped, like, here first, and she's so big, it's a very dainty... It's a very dainty... Well, look where you are. Right. So she's sneaking could up Could she me. be tippy-toeing to the camp? Oh, she, she is just doing this. So this is, this is how heavy she's walking at a, at a tippy-toe. Yeah. We're so of 100 percentage points of Sasquatch evidence, how many points is this worth? Well, I'd like to hear some. Here's three. Three. Three points. Okay. All right, well, let's find another 33 tracks. Let's go look at this structure real okay. quickly. So did you make this structure? No, no, this was just here one day. I heard a whole bunch of crashing, bashing around. Right. And I came out and this was here. And this is like, and there were, there were lots of Sasquatch tracks around here. I mean, this is like in there, right? So they, they made this? I, I think so. Even look at this. Look how that's, how would you twist that in there like that? That's not gonna happen naturally. Look at this tree. You think I could do that? You think I could ply and bend this? I may, maybe. Look, you think I could lift this? People? I mean, I could lift that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you, you popped it up. I'm not, help, I'm not helping that with that one. This one's oh, looks like Andy was gonna need even more conclusive evidence. Luckily, Todd had it right at our campsite. So this is great. Is this sort of like, do you base yourself here and then go out hunting from here or searching? Yeah, well, even uh, the Sasquatch came right up on that ridge. The Sasquatch came that close? There were tracks right up to the ridge. Could you reenact it? They just, they came right on the edge. We never saw this, Yeah. but in the morning you see tracks, right? Oh, Big right. impressions. Gotcha. So, and we put apples up just over there, and they took the apples. Yep. And they eat the apples, the whole thing. Hang on, if we're leaving apples out, will bears want apples? Yeah, but don't worry about that. I was going to be a bit worried about that. Yeah, I'd be a bit worried too. I also got this one. It's a field notes journal. Mm. You do this for a living. That's brilliant. Trick. Yeah, that's, that's Could something. you teach me how to, like, log Sasquatch evidence? Sure. So go. put the date in? Yep. 2019, yep. And you're going to say how many apples you put up on structure one? How many apples will we put up? We're going to go we'll, we'll do that okay, right now. Apples, that's right now, TBC. But first, Todd had to lightly startle us. Woo! What, what was that for? Uh, it's, if the Sasquatch are out there, which they probably are, it's a, it sounds like I'm fun and exciting, oh. right? And if there's a bear or something... No! Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't make too much sound, because then... Sorry! Yeah, we all felt like the Sasquatch had been adequately warned of our presence now. We entered the forest and headed to the apple site. We're gonna put apples on this tree here, and, and what, what I like to do is, uh, so you put them on a branch like this. So, like and, and put them, put them up, put them up at a height if you can. Putting up apples. I'm gonna put you on my shoulders. Okay, sure. So I'm just gonna, if I just do this. No, no, no. Step on. My oh, okay, step. sorry. I was worried about. Yeah. I was worried about hurting hey, you. Wanna... No, you won't. Don't worry. You sure? No problem. Very easy. Okay, nice and comfortable. Ready? Okay, I'm just gonna snap this off a bit. No, no, I'm gonna go up. Okay, go up. It's going up, Ando. Whoa, he is. I'm very comfortable right now. Take your time. You seem very no comfortable. No problem. In hindsight, I should have logged this amazing site in my notes. It's really important to get that one on solid. Oh, that's really solid. Yeah, happy with that? Okay. We placed 11 apples in the trees with no help yeah. from Hamish. That's a guy. I'm going to sketch it. And then headed back to camp. Why haven't we seen more of them? People see them all the time. Have you seen my footage? It's ridiculously uh, impressive. Wow, ridiculously impressive. This is surely going to convince Andy. Holy mackerel. That's his... That's his... There's eye, eye, I nose, know. Oh, right. mouth. Oh, sorry, I thought it was one sitting down. See, that looks like, I mean, they're, they're quite human in their, no, I'm not saying this because I think this is a guy dressed up as a Sasquatch. I'm saying right. they're <clears throat> quite human mm -hmm. in their appearance. Absolutely, very human, but they're the most man-like primate on the planet, no doubt about it. Yeah. Except for man. Andy seemed pretty convinced, but before bed, he had one more question. If I need to go to the toilet in the night, then you gotta, you gotta wake me up. Oh, you need to come with us. Well, I need to be around for it. So that's high ground. That's very dangerous. An animal wants high ground on you. Yeah. And there's high ground on both sides of us. Easy. And you never, ever run. Nobody runs. All righty. Just a standard bedtime briefing. Listen to what I am saying to you. Stick to the pump and do what I tell you to do. Yeah. But it turned out that the night still had a few surprises in store for us. Did you hear that? I think I heard a Sasquatch eating an apple. In freezing cold Canada, we were staking out Bigfoot and I knew we were close. <laughs> I just had a Sasquatch eating an apple. I thought I'd wake you, so sorry. It's an amazing thing. This Sasquatch, just, the apples are so far away. 
I've needed to go to the toilet for an hour, but I can't be bothered going. But Todd's warning had us worried. Then you gotta, you gotta wake me up and do what I tell you to do. I'm not waking. I'm not waking. Don't right there in the car. I'm not waking a grown man from his sleep just clearly to wee. You told us specifically you'd be angry at us because it's a safety thing. However, true adventurers can never be tamed. Right, you know what? Let's do a wee by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, we rose triumphant, knowing that we'd weed on our own, like very big boys over there, and chatted to Todd about the night's events. I heard distinctly on mountain air, which mm. does carry noise. Mm. Well, thump, thump, crunch. The sounds of two heavy feet and no, a crunch of an that. apple. Hmm. Yeah. It takes a lot of practice to really pick up on your sounds. Well, I've been out here for almost a day now. Yeah, no. <laughs> he didn't say it with words, but I knew Todd now saw me as an experienced wilderness master. So this was it. We headed off to see whether the apples had gone. I felt great about it. If just one apple was missing, it would definitely take Andy to 100 points of evidence and he'd have to wear a big bag of marijuana around his neck at the airport. I mean, with the amount of sasquies prowling around these woods, there was no way there would still be 11 apples on these trees. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Uh, yeah. So, Todd, just helping me out here on my, like, Charles Darwin type journal entry. So what would I write? Scientific? Apples untouched. Apples untouched. Untouched, yeah. I'm going to put this down as not conclusive evidence, mm -hmm. but not inconclusive, is it? No, Should I think this is conclusive. Conclusive in what? That nothing came here. That, that, that's, that's, I conclude, I concur with that conclusion. Yeah. All right, why? Well, but you know, you know what's significant too is mm -hmm. in this region, I've never had a bear take any apples on all the four structures I put out because this is Sasquatch habitat and yeah. bears come in and out of here fast. There's an old saying in the bear community, you don't dick around with an animal that's got two dicks. Yeah. <laughs> They're bipenal. <laughs> you don't. Sure. Well, if anything, we learn a new term. <laughs> ah, come on. Yeah, come on, guys. So that was it. We'd proven apples will remain on trees if undisturbed, but that wasn't the challenge. No, Ham, it wasn't. So it was back in the car to sort out one last bit of business Hey, what, there's going to be a woozy bear walking around there later today having the time of his life. And we drove to the airport so we could get to LA. It's right there that I showed Andy that I got the easy Sudoku out in one minute. Well done again on that, Ham. Yeah, thank you. And the next morning, we drove to Topanga, California, so I could give Hamish his next exciting little bit of mail. We're going to meet amazing recording artists who are at the top of their game. And we're at a record producer's house. Yeah. We we're going to meet... Dana and Kelly, and they make music just for animals. Or oh, for animals. Yes, Ham, for animals. And Dana, with his mate Skip, have actually had a lot of success creating music for pets with hit songs like Squeaky Squeaky Bark Bark. Squeaky Squeaky Bark Bark. You're a good, good dog, it's true. And you're a good dog. You're a good dog. So it was up a, a lot of stairs, actually, to meet Dana and his wife, Kelly. So, Dana, how long have you been making music for animals? For about 24 years. You obviously started out doing music for humans. Um... Started out working with humans. <laughs> and we wrote songs about the dogs in our neighborhood. OK. And then we realized we should actually get an animal communicator and talk to these animals From the animal's and write something yes. that we think they would like. So when you say with animal communicators and psychics, so you've got, you use someone to communicate with the animals to yes. get an idea of what they yes. want to hear? Yes. So do you ever get surprised by what comes back from the communicator? I'm totally freaked out. Like, what are, what are some, some of the stuff? And there's some stuff that has come through that I actually can't talk about. Right. And they say things that no. we don't want to know. Of course, they're like little walking nanny cams. Yes, it's so <laughs> exactly. true. They say everything. Yeah. So it's time to meet a person who can connect with these tiny furry nanny oh, cams, right. a fellow hey, called Vince. Yes, hey, how are you? Hamish, nice how are you? Look. Hamish, I knew that. Uh, he's good. I'm psychic. No, I read it on the back of your switch. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked him how his psychic connections work. And do you need the animal to be there right in front no, of No, they don't have to be there. It's remotely because we're still all connected in a different plane, you know? Yeah, it's it's like you don't carry your information with you. Yeah. It's someplace else, and the same with, with animals. So Vince could tune into any animal in the world. This was good news for what I had planned. Hamish and his wife Zoe, uh, the owner of a very grumpy cat, 
Oh, he's not that grumpy. He's cute. His name's Meowbert. <laughs> Called Meowbert. Meowbert? Meowbert, yes. Meowbert, like Meowbert. Yeah. Meowbert? Meow, Meow. like so <laughs> the noise they Meowbert. make. Meow with Bert on the end. <laughs> Meowbert. Okay. Meowbert. That's good. I, yeah. love, I Meowbert. love that. Meowbert. Uh, okay. I feel like we've definitely established his name as Meowbert. Here's, now. here's what I want to put to you guys. Could we have a challenge where you guys write a song for Meowbert? Hamish and I go away and try and write a song for Meowbert. I've organised for Hamish's wife to get up early and we can Skype the animal and we play both songs to me, Albert, and see which one he likes. You've got the musical advantage, you've got a communicator in Vince. The only tactical advantage we have is I know this cat. Yeah. And I, <laughs> That's a big one. That's a big but I could, and I could throw some things in there. But Hamish said something rap. that I'm going to need to correct on him already because I'm already making a connection. You are, right. You don't know your cat as well as you think you do. Oh, oh he's talking oh. balls! Oh. Oh. Okay, oh. huge game there, Vince. Okay, you just with from that from line, Mr. that Georgia. line belongs to us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we had a deal, so we left the guys with photos of Meowbert. That's Bert. Oh, wow. Oh, my God! And told them that we were off to our recording studio, right, right, and both right, teams right. only had two hours for the challenge. Good luck, guys. All this right. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The first thing that bothers me is the angle they've taken yeah. to just make it's it all about. Team. Well, it's a good tactic <laughs> because they've just made it all about how I don't know this cat and he's unhappy. Because you don't know me, you think you do. I got news for them. Yeah. I do understand the cat. Good. I know what he likes. Okay. The little liver bites. Yeah. Loves a laser pointer. You say you know your cat ham, but Vince was tuning into him and thinks otherwise. Why the f did you name me Bianca? Yeah, I can't believe you just said that because he hates That's, his name. Yeah. He hates his That's name. That's what I okay? thought. Here's what I'm thinking. I know a few of the key noises and words to make to get his attention. So Yes. Puss puss puss. The chorus then should be Puss puss puss. I reckon puss, you puss. and me and then it doesn't hey. not quite like that. Get in there, you don't about know I've seen. me like you think you do. I, okay, that's a chorus. Gee, they're going well. How is our car going? Oh, Ham was having a sleep. A cat nap, Ando. To write music for a cat, you must sleep like one. Anyway, fully recharged, we arrived to meet our sound producer, Pierre, who's worked with hundreds of bands, yeah? and we filled him in yeah. on the challenge. So it doesn't have to sound good to humans. Right. It only has to sound good to cats. Yes. So I, th I think we should start with just a guitar and some drums. lyrics. No, not drums. Yeah. Just guitar, and we get the form of a song. And then where's and, the drums? No, and then we build the whole song up. With <laughs> drums, I'm assuming? I mean, you'd want drums. You don't know me you as you think you do. Me you don't like feel I me. want you, you too. Thank you. That's yes. it. Yes. Does he like fast songs? Does he like slow songs? This is our competitive advantage, you knowing the cat. I think he likes drums. I don't think he... I think you like drums. I think he likes... I think... I've, 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 he's seen me practice drums at home before. OK. What kind of a name should he have? Well, oh, wait, wait, wait. He's saying something about I'm the king of the house. Woo! I'm the king of the house. There's so much coming through at one time, which is crazy. So you, you can say, puss, 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 puss. Hey, buddy, won't you come inside? Yeah. Puss, 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 puss. We're all friends, you got no reason to hide. We had a chorus and it was time to lay down the guitar part with some specific sounds we knew Bertie would love. Hey, one second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what are you... Um, was that a... Yeah. yeah. We are in a flow. We kind of were in a flow. Were you picking up on what I was sort of doing? Yeah, I think it obviously it's better if you can fall into an actual groove together, but... <laughs> <laughs> Pierre was digging me as a muser, kind of letting me do my thing. Not my read. And over at Dana's house, they were already fine-tuning their song. That, that's the missing line. We had only 45 minutes left in this challenge. Uh, I'll throw you another one down and be boring and on the beat if you want. And we couldn't agree on a single thing. Put your hand up if you thought that was sounding great. It's not called a superlink. <laughs> yeah, called it a superlink. You want to get pretzels? I'm OK, thanks. Yeah, but we need the... Oh. Sorry about this, Pierre. We were in Topanga, California, 
trying to write a song that Hamish's cat would like more than Dana's song. I am more than just a show cat toy. And his song was in a good spot, while we were enduring a band member's insistence of including drums. Cut. Cut. <laughs> What's up? We'll give you one more. We'll go again. Just remember, we're still staying on the beat. Are we? Well, one of us was thinking of trying. I'm more than just a show cat talk, and you are more than just a girl yeah, and a boy. Yeah, that's more like it. I just wanted, do we want to have, like, a an actual melody? You're, th you're probably thinking a lot like a human at the moment. Mm. Yeah, OK, I am. Yeah. And I think if we pick stuff that feels a bit odd to us as humans, we're in with a great shot that will appeal to him as a cat. Oh, great. We've definitely got that covered, then. Well, that was it, for me. with both songs cool. complete. Cool, right. Dana, Kelly and Vince arrived at the studio and we got the Skype up to Hamish's wife, Zoe, and the cat, Meowbert. Oh, oh hi, honey. <laughs> there was one last person to introduce to everyone. This is Lydia. Hi, hi Lydia. Lydia. Lydia, a third party, unbiased animal psychic. Nice to meet you, and Vincent. Vincent. Nice to meet you, Vincent. Yeah, My pleasure. Communicator. Oh, well, good, OK. Hi. So for those people counting, yes, two out of six people in the room are animal psychics. There's our target animal. Okay. Uh, my wife is holding him. Yeah. Oh, how darling. Oh, ginger cats are awesome. Okay. Zoe and Meowbert. Yeah, but are you ready? Never been more ready. Okay. Look at him. Great. So Lydia sat and tuned into me, Albert, and Dana and Kelly's song was played first. You don't know me like you think you do. Oh, that cuts deep. Well, it's not about you, Ham. It's about me, Albert, and he seemed pretty bloody into it. You don't feel me like I these lyrics couldn't be right. Through the pain of this hurtful song, I was willing my cat son Meowbert to give me a sign he was not into this. Oh, it's a walk-off. It's a walk-off. <laughs> yes, a walk-off. A walk-off. The most offensive thing you could do to a musician. OK, calm it down, mate. Sorry, yeah. We were pumped. Their song finished up. That was very good. And we had every chance for a Hamish and Andy win. So Zoe got the cat back and it was time for the world premiere of Puss, Puss, Puss. And boy, did it bring back some great memories of our day in the studio. Laser pointers. Liver treats. Scratches behind the ear. <laughs> Spewing on the red cat. <laughs> These are things you love, Bertie. Jumping on the bed when it's cold. Well, we'd given it our all and got a great response from the humans. But how did the feline feel? Linda tuned into Meowbert to find out who he thought the true winner was. Would it be the psychic team or Meowbert's dad, who had a little bit of help from his friend Andy? Oh, of course, dad's, hands down. Oh, absolutely. We got it. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> We did it. We had a hit on our hands. Eat my drum solo, Dana and Kelly. Honey, we did it. It's not in the competitive spirit. Stop gloating. <laughs> Ham took the advice from his wife and shook hands with our opponents. That was lots of fun. Before we cracked a celebratory beer. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, hey. hey mate. Great win. I know. I didn't want to go too wild. Yeah. Pierre, have you had worse musicians than us come in and book? The studio. Yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, I wow. find that very hard to believe. You want to know what's hard to believe? That later I convinced Andy to try and ride up the biggest mountain in America on a tandem bike with me. Let's hear it for cycling on three. One, two, three. <laughs> but next, let's play ball! A new game. Damn it! <laughs> 
combining baseball... Woo, bring it in, boys! ...and hot dogs. Come on, come on. Yep, it's hot balls or base dogs. We haven't decided on a name. For my next surprise, I brought Andy to Arlington, Texas to make his boyhood dreams come true. All right, this'll do. Baseball. Globe Life Park, home of the Texas Rangers, baby. Fact. The purpose of this holiday is to have maximum fun. True. Fact. It's one of your fantasies to hit a big old home run. True. That is true. You always talk about it. I've decided to make your wish come true. It's my mission. But this isn't a charity, so obviously, there'll be some conditions. So what are one of the conditions? I was going to save that info for when we were inside. Here we go. I'll take you onto the field. What's that? Um, paying my respects to former great centre. Why, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. Realising we've got a giant Major League Baseball stadium all to ourselves. This is awesome. This is great. I was about to make my best mate's dreams come true. But I had to clear up a few things first. Here's the way the game's going to work. You're the whole batting team, mm -hmm. OK? You get three outs per innings, mm -hmm. just like a normal team would. If you hit a home run at any time, mm -hmm. you've won the game. However, to get to each innings, mm -hmm. you have to eat what's known here as the big deal. What's the big deal? God, I'm so glad you asked. Big deal is made up of a delicious American hot dog and a thirst quenching large soda. A unique combination that's exclusive to Globe Life Park. Hot damn, that really is a big deal. For every... For every innings. Just what waiting for him to do the maths. Yep, he's got it. Nine hot dogs, nine well, coats. Just hit a home run first go then. Done. I will. Actually, that depends. Who was I up against? Great question, Ando. The team you will be playing today is one of the best high school teams in the local area, the South Grand Prairie Warriors. They're teenagers. It seemed fair. If at any point mm -hmm. the big deal is getting too much of a big deal for you and the big deal reappears, mm -hmm. you're, you're out. Do we have a big deal? We have a big deal. We have a big deal. <laughs> so while Andy hit the rooms to put his uniform on... Good warm-up! Let's bring it in! I rounded up my boys from SGP for a chat with their new coach, Coach Me. We know what we're here for. Uh, you face a fierce opponent today in Andy Lee, one of Australia's most attractive sports people. Cooper, how many in your arm do you reckon you've got? As many as it takes. So even if he banks it like nine innings, that could be... He's not going nine innings. He's not going on innings. That's my boy! <laughs> well, I thought I was a chance, because I was seeking some advice. I had Alan Border's number, so I texted Alan Border, ex-Australian captain. Sensible pick. But I thought I'd ask the actual baseballers. We were kneeling, because I'd seen that on sports movies. Real talk. Do we think Andy's going to hit this home run? I'll be surprised if he makes solid contact. <laughs> mm, no solid contact is going to make hitting a home run hard... Well, impossible, One, I guess. Two, three. SGP. Don't worry about me, mate. I had my own secret tricks. Dancing with that pitcher, getting that load. Are you watching YouTube video. videos on how to hit home? Yeah. Jeez, now he'd watched that one three-minute video and he seemed almost too prepared to hit a home run. Meanwhile, I invented a system to inspire my troops. Yeah. Jackson, great example of a selfless leader. Ten coach points for you. Well done. I loved coach points. <laughs> one coach point for everyone, just for fun. Just as a tip. There we go. <laughs> a bit loose with the old coach points. <laughs> And to get the game underway, it was time for Andy to eat his first big deal. Andy, do you want a dog first or soda first? I'm going to dog first. Raymond, thanks yeah. very much. You're welcome. You won't see me very often. Andy was out of the gates with confidence. Any ketchup? Got to eat it dry. But sadly, no condiments. Eat, 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 We were just trying to help. That didn't stop Ando from trying to start getting into the head of my team. Who's the pitcher? Do you don't need to know that. Special up. Well done, Coop. Sorry. Sorry, no, it's all right. Five coach points for honesty. How much do you guys value the coach points? Two coach points for anyone that doesn't answer. Good boys. Ando right. moves swiftly onto the soda, and with the first big deal done, it was time to play ball. He's ready to bat. Good luck. Well, a very big deal at Globe Life Park here in Arlington, Texas today as ambitious newcomer Andy Lee faces Coop and the South Grand Prairie Warriors, who will be led by interim coach Harmish Blake. Let's play ball! A very vocal coach calling the shots early as Coop winds and deals the first pitch. Straight. Swing and a miss, he's late, and that's strike one for Lee. Coop lines up again. A whiff, and it's strike two. Nice, Coop. Coop out of the wind. The pitch. 
Strike three, you're out. One out to Andy, nice catch. Andy had two more outs in the inning until he'd have to down his second big deal. But for now, I guess he was just trying to loosen those arms up. Coop with the ball. <laughs> OK, this wasn't working. A little bit high and tight, huh? A little bit high and tight. <laughs> I had an idea to try a different strategy. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> but leaving it didn't seem smart. <laughs> Especially the second time. You're out of there! Great job, Coop! One out to go. Coop rockets another, and finally oh. Lee swings and makes contact. Oh. But it's a foul ball. I can at least say I hit one into the stands. <laughs> no, no, I won't say that. <laughs> the not sellout crowd were loving Andy's lack of ability, but then he shocked them. Bottom of the first, two out with two strikes. <laughs> He hit one forwards. That's up, but Ramirez it's... is on the move, and he got it! Oh! No. What a catch! Outstanding catch in center field. Ten coach points! Great job. Great job. An enthusiastic All coach All Blake right. congratulates his team for a flawless first inning, and Lee contemplates what's next, Homer or Hurl. We'll find out after these messages. We're back at Globe Life Park today as Andy Lee devours his second big deal. How you going out there? A little rattled, to be honest. That was a good connect, that last one. Hurt my hand. Hmm, <laughs> you do not hear the pros I'm say that. Anyway, Ando finished his soda, and it was time for the second inning. Let's just keep doing what we're doing, SGP. Warriors. All right, top of the second now. And a slight delay as Coach Blake approaches Coop. Let's listen in. All right, Coop, what's our plan here? Um, uh, just gonna keep throwing. Looks like he can't hit. Sounds like a hell of a strategy as we enter the top of the second now, and Lee means business. <gasps> Ground ball, and it's through for a base hit for Lee. Can Ando make it to base? He's, hey, he's made it to base! It's a lot easier just to run through than slide. Sliding makes you slower. Okay. <laughs> Still no out. But after that mini victory, and he was quickly run out. Oh. And caught out. <sighs> twice. All right. Making that a quick That's inning as day. Lee heads back Woo, to the refreshment boys. stand where he'll eat and drink his way into the third. Oh, there's my son, Stuart, who turns 16 today. Happy birthday, Stewie. But as the third inning began, he was dishing up more of the same. Strike. Swing Strike. and a miss. Strike. Is he getting better? No. If anything, he's getting worse. Couldn't have hit that pitch with an oar. Another strike. <laughs> Maybe if he'd started his swing yesterday. <laughs> so it was back to Big Deal headquarters for hot dog and soda number four. That's rubbing it in. And he got a reply from Alan Border. Close your eyes and swing hard. <laughs> Worked for me. Yeah, but AB never had to deal with multiple hot dogs, <coughs> as far as we know. <coughs> Hold it in. Come on. <coughs> the big deal stayed down, but fueled Andy for his worst inning yet. Fly ball. That goes up. And he's out. Caught again. And out. Andy Lee, to the hot dog stand, please. Oh, that's not good. That's too quick. You got one more in you? Yeah. I don't know how many more after that. A fifth dog and soda was served, but Andy was struggling. I just want to go down this one. Oh, boy, we've been here before, haven't we? Raymond piped up with some expert advice. Dip, eat, dip, eat. Hey, Raymond thinks Soften dip. that bread. My boys okay. swooped in to offer assistance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. That is funny. Um, two coaches points for whoever's making the spewing noises. He's good. good. We're going on the fifth. And surprisingly, we're back. But that fifth big deal does not seem to be agreeing with Lee. Let's listen in. What's wrong? I've had too many hot dogs. Do we need a bucket? This could be the ball game as the bucket is called in by Lee. Thank you, guys. Coach Blake doing what he can for this heroic athlete. My head is full of hot dogs. I'm up to here with hot dogs. I can't hear a single thing. If you let those dogs out, no one's letting the dogs out. Wow. An inspiring moment, and Lee rises above the pain to continue his quest for a homer. Once again, Lee swings, hits it high, and gives it everything he has oh, to run. Oh, the running. Oh, no. <laughs> running was a bad idea. I've called many major league games in my time, and this Sorry. is not the body language of a man about to achieve the most difficult thing in baseball. You all right? Mm -hmm. You're good. Swallow it down. That's just a thick spit. <laughs> He's all good, folks. Well, I've never seen anything like this before. It can't be long now before Lee lets those dogs out. 
this could be Lee's last chance at glory. Coop whines. A swing, and Lee oh, connects. There you go. Run it, run it. He's found an opening. Holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not out of the park, but it could still be a home run. Run, run. Holy hot dogs, he can make it. I couldn't believe it. Not a good throw. The first throw was wild, Lee's so if I could just get the past bag. third, I had a chance. Run! He may have this, folks. It's going to be close. No! He's out at the plate. Almost pulled off the unthinkable. Bucket! Jackson, bring the bucket! <laughs> Five catch points, Jackson. And that's the ball game, folks. SGP takes this one in the fifth. Another holiday where I'm holding your hair back as you vomit. Thanks for watching. I'm Major League Baseball play-by-play -play man Matt Vaskersian. And to be clear, I did this as a favor. Good night. If you could add one element to your game, mm. what would have got you that home run? More skill. More skill. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> the thing that gets us every time. <laughs> yeah, but I think we just stick with our policy of hoping for flukes. Amen, Ando. We stayed in Texas that night because our next activity was in Dallas, where I decided holidays should be about learning, not just mucking around. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Would you like a sip of the hottest coffee in the world? <laughs> <laughs> and having spent a long time on the road, delirium may have crept in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tough envelope. <laughs> this coffee's kicked in. <laughs> the coffee has kicked in. Right, OK. Stop. I've got a video to show you. Look to me for the video. I'm smiling with my thumbs up. It's true. It's exciting. A video message. Not really a message. Watch what this guy's doing. Cowboy man. What's he doing? He's auctioning something. He's at the World Auctioneer Championships. He's a world champ. So English is not a prerequisite. Well, that's what I want to find out. I've enrolled us in auctioneer's school. I want to, to learn, learn how to do this. Yes. And we were going to learn from the best at America's Auction Academy. Home of champions. Headed up by Mike, who had been instructing for nearly 30 years. We don't really have this style of auction back home. So it intrigues us. Andy, Andy showed me a video where it was like the World Championships of auctioning. Yes. Is that a real thing? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's we a have sort the, of sport. We have the real champions here. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. It sounds like they sang a number and then a lot of filler. What's the filler? What is the filler? Is it, uh, like, a, is uh, it like a novel? That... It's different words it could, and phrases. OK. Like, will you bid? Will you give? How about How about $25? Right. Now, now $50. Will you give me $50? Now $75. Will you give me $75? So it's relevant to the I feel like giving you $75. I don't even know what I'm buying. <laughs> You're very good. So <laughs> Mike was good. Yeah, he's the best. As complete kind of novices, where can we get to today? Well, <laughs> just take that. <laughs> I'm going to start. I'm going to set the bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just a second. I'll get there. I think his hand ended up below novice, so not a great standard. But it didn't matter, because Mike had auctioneers in his class with a range of experience. My name's Barrett Bray. I'm from Oklahoma. I went to school about four and a half months ago back in January, so I'm brand new. I'm the 2019 World Automobile Auctioneer Champion. I just grew up knowing nothing different. I interpret for my friends that are deaf. 25, and I bid it at 30, not 35, and to get 35, 40. 25, 30, here, get a bit 30, here, and I'm pong, get a bit 35. 20, not a bid, now 25, now 25, now bid it at 25. Give 50, bid it out here, now 75, 75, all on the money, now one, now one, now one, what to give a hundred dollar? I bid it down, two, fit it out, get a bit, 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 we just wanted Mike to pick out of the two of us who was the better auctioneer by the end of the class. You can say no one. <laughs> but we prefer you not to use that card. You're not going to say no one. No. I, have, I have here. complete and uh, definite trust something's going to happen. <laughs> We've got complete definite trust, definite trust here. Do we have ultimate trust? Ultimate trust, ultimate, ultimate. trust. Yes. Ultimate. Do we have extreme trust? Do we have extreme trust? Yeah. Do we have complete trust? Complete trust? Yes. Sold for complete trust. Yes. Yes, I was off to a flyer. And we sat down we're to right begin now. the war of who could impress Mike the most. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, start out very basic, OK? We're going to start out. Is he's already writing. He's, no. I don't think he's paying attention, Mike. Sorry. Okay, I'm just taking notes. Remember Sorry, that Mark. part? Yeah. I didn't realise you'd play dirty off the top. 
Well, bad luck, Ando. But come on, pay attention. We're going to start out with the tongue twisters first. I'd like for everyone to rise. You're always moving your hands like you're looking for money. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> rubber, rubber baby buggy, buggy bumper. bumper. Rubber baby buggy, buggy bumper. Oh, baby damn. buggy bumper. I was all over the shop, and Hayne was really good at it. Rubber baby buggy bumper. bumper. Rubber baby buggy, buggy bumper. bumper. Stopped. Very good. You too. And the tongue twisters just kept rolling. Tommy and Adamus took two T's and time to the top of two tall trees. Sixty-six sailors sailed the Mississippi. But I wasn't the only one struggling. Sixty-six sailors sailed the Mississippi in 1666. Betty bought her bus and butter, but she said this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. So she bought a bit of better butter, put it in her bitter batter, made her bitter batter better. So it's better. Betty bought her bought a bit of better butter. That's good. You could understand everything we said, right? Big time, Mike. I like that. Big time Mike. It's my internal nickname I've given you. That's Big Time Mike. I like it. I like the way you think. This was a joke. Mike clearly had a favourite on your mic. Let's take a five minute break. So I thought I'd use the break to drum up some anti Hamish sentiment from my classmates. I think that they, like, Hamish is just sucking up a bit too much. Sorry to interrupt, Big Time Mike. Nope. Uh, how's everything going? You enjoying the break? I think it's going great. Do you want a biscuit or a tea or a coffee? <laughs> <laughs> if you had to think of something negative to say about him, what, what would you say? He needs to take his hat off indoors. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, do you see any other gentleman wearing a hat indoors? It's great. Trey, what do you reckon? Is this something? Same thing. Same thing. Great. The hat. I'll sting him for the hat. Oh, damn. His class resumed. He'd taken the bloody thing off. We started class again with a mock auction. Auction's on. How many dollars here? Let's go and hook you $25. And pretty soon, this became a battle to the death, too. I'm in 50 there and 75. I'm 50, 75. Now $100 here, but you get one. One here, now a quarter, one and a quarter. $5 here, 175. 75, and now four. I'm at 374. Here, now quarter, four and a quarter, four and a half. Here, get him on 27. Here's 75. And now 500. And now 750. And now $1,000. And now 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, 150, 200,000, 250, 300, half a million, one million, million five. <laughs> million five. Million five, I got it. What had he got? Oh, right, looks like I got Mike's old gavel for one and a half million dollars. Small price to pay, I think, in the tussle for class dominance. At that right. point, Mike asked me up in front of the class. Andy, let me have you up here. And I got a gift from God. Hamish had put his hat back on. I knew I was behind in this competition, but not for long, because I was about to unleash hat hell on my unsuspecting opponent and cause a controversy I knew could end this holiday forever. Too much? No, that's good. It's bloody got me. We were at auction school and I'd found a class gripe about Hamish. He needs to take his hat off indoors. <laughs> now up in front of the class, I saw the perfect opportunity to highlight Hames' headwear mishap. Mike, um... Yes? His hat's on inside. You think? A true cowboy never takes his hat off. Ooh. It's a bit... I mean, I didn't see anyone else with that. A lot of the other guys were saying it, mate. I just, it wasn't... Well, I mean, you know, you know, I'm glad you brought that up yeah. because that I'm is... Trent, I mean, that we, how do you feel about the hat? We. Please take it off in the classroom. Please take I mean, that's just not me. Just, it was actually a couple of the other guys bought it up, and I just thought I'd let you know. I saw Andy smoking in the lobby. I didn't smoke. <laughs> I did. Mark, I, I did. I saw him smoking, and I can't say for sure it was tobacco. Gee, that escalated quickly. Anyway, with Hamish's head now hat-free, it was a perfect chance for me to impress Mike with my solo performance. 650, how about seven? 650, how about seven? Do I have seven now? Seven now, seven now. How about six? How about 750? How about 750? Yep. 750 now, 750 now. Do I have eight? Eight, do I have eight? Do I have eight? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just make, he's taking vendor pins. He's taking ghost pins. Australian off the down, <laughs> Australian down. I just realised I was just taking fake pins. <laughs> I apologise. Sorry. Well, that hadn't gone all that well. Good sticking with the hat, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. Well played, Lee. That's not over yet. Uh, I, don't think it's <laughs> I thought I was out of this. But when Haim had his go, he went a little crazy. 800's a call. I know you got it, sir. 800. There we go. 850. Can I hear 850? I am being 800 is a bit. Do I hear 850? Yeah. 850 is a bit. Do I hear 900? Here we go. Now we're getting hot. 850 is a bit. Do I hear 900? 850 is a bit. Do I hear 900? 900 with you, sir. 900 is a bit. Do I hear 900? 950 is a bit. 1,000 is a bit. Do I hear 1,050? 1,050. 1,050 is a bit. Do I hear 1,100? 1,150. 1,100. 1,000 is a bit. 5,000 is sold! Ah. Mark, we're going to hear! It was amazing. We got to five grand. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh. That is how you start a party. Did you notice he kept getting louder? And the bids went up. <laughs> they well, wanted, finished on a $5,000 bid. They would give you money so you wouldn't hurt them. <laughs> if that's what it takes, am I right? So do you want the, the people there to be scared? No. <laughs> Pet petrified? Because that's... Well, I mean, I guess you've got a choice now, Mike. You can choose between the guy that's on the front foot getting excited, encouraging everyone to dig in their pockets, or the guy that fell over and said sorry. I mean, that's your choice. And I love you. <laughs> Big time, Mike. <laughs> I stand by it. When you feel a connection, you have got to go with it. All right, you need, Andy, you need to come up because I have to make the decision now. I join Hamish up the front, just hoping that Mike would Where's see through his go? false flattery. Who would get the sacred promotional hat and win okay. this battle? It's a tough decision. So I'm going to I'm going to put the hat on top of the one. The crown. It's, it this really is the is crowning crown achievement well right here. So. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, and you know, I'm walking around because I'm so nervous about this decision. This is probably one of the biggest decisions I've made. So, today's winner, I'm, I'm just telling you. <laughs> and I guess you can wear a hat inside. <laughs> On behalf of all of our students that are here today, we want to welcome you to the United States. Thank, thank you, you for being here. Can I just say, I want to thank everyone on the decision committee and everyone that backs my campaign. Thanks very much. Woo. God bless Dallas. God bless America. God bless auctioneering. God bless me. All right. That's right. I'd God blessed myself. And riding high off the victory, I returned to the hotel for winner's drinks. Just so happened the only person who'd celebrate with me was my direct opponent. Cheers. <sighs> hey, well done. Mate. Really Thank proud you. of you. Thanks for finding my spot for me. <laughs> and I was very glad that we were back being friends because we only had one activity left on our perfect holiday, which was going to require a lot of teamwork. And it was happening in the mountains of Colorado. We are in Idaho Springs in Colorado. It's very, very early. And I have planned something pretty exciting for our last day. Um, Andy doesn't know it yet, but we are going to attempt to ride a tandem bike up the highest road in North America, Mount Evans. We are doing this to earn ourselves the trophy, um, the Brian and Kirk Saunders uh, trophy, named after the first guys to do it on a tandem bike, the twins, Brian and Kirk Saunders, and it's a wonderful mission for two friends to try and achieve. Well, one or another, we're about to make history. So, full disclosure, I really like bike riding. Riding up this mountain is something that I have wanted to do for a long time. It's exciting if you're into this kind of thing because it is a whopper of a mountain. When you're that high, oxygen is scarce. Most people that I know that go up there, they end up puking, they end up, you know, they get altitude sickness. I mean, it's a 14,000 foot peak, so you don't mess with that. It's cozy. All that was left to do now was to reveal to Andy the details of our final tandem adventure. We're going on a bike ride. We're going on a bike ride. We're going on a tandem bike ride. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the worst kind of bike. <laughs> I don't really ride. I know you don't bike ride. I know. So this feels like you've picked something that you really want to do. No, there is a reason for this. We have a legitimate chance at a trophy. OK, we're here in Colorado, we're in the Rocky Mountains. Pretty close to here is a, is a mountain called Mount Evans. Anyone that climbs Mount Evans on a tandem bike, and only a handful have done it, win a thing called the Brian and Kirk Saunders Trophy. The Brian and Kirk. That's Amish why. And he's Brian and Kirk's trophy. <laughs> Attempt. Jersey. Yeah, OK. Attempt. Uh, there's also something else that I think it's important that I come clean about. Let me explain a little bit more about the trophy. I'll show you the website. Uh, there is no Brian and Kirk Saunders trophy. I made it up. I made up the trophy, I made up the park, I faked the website. Even Brian and Kirk Saunders um, don't exist. That is just a photo I got from Getty Images. They were twins. One of them, Brian, had a heart condition, so they, was, they cycled long distances to not let it affect their passion. But why? Why would I do this to Ando? I wasn't 100% sure he'd do it without a carrot. Only 10 teams have ever held the trophy, and there's double ups in there. Quick question. Oh, no, hopefully my backstory has got this covered. You know, I've had a, a bit of bum stuff. Phew, he was just worried about his recent bum operation. Got a dud, you got a dud bum. Luckily, good old yeah. Boy Scout Blakey is always prepared. What's that? Bum cream, anti-friction cream. Thought of everything. Definitely gonna need this. Use the whole tub. I don't want it back. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I have used them. <laughs> With Andy's bum properly prepped, he was ready to ride. And I was wrapped he was excited about the made-up trophy that I even had Mason, the local bartender, playing along with. No, man. If that's not the trophy, I don't know what is. <laughs> so that's the perpetual shield that our names will go on. Yeah, absolutely. If, we if, make if you it. accomplish it, yeah. then your name gets up on one of those shields. Geez, an award-winning performance from Mason. Now it was off to the start line to meet our support crew. This is Kevin, he's our bike dude. And Kevin, along with his colleague Dwight, were also in on the fake trophy story. Dwight, you've ridden, you've ridden out Mount Evans, haven't, haven't you? I have. What's she like? Do you really want me to tell you? Do you really uh, want to know what to <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think I do. How long does it take you to get up? It'll take a long time. I've never done a ride. Wow. You've picked a good one to start with. <laughs> yeah, Dwight was right. What lay ahead was the fourth highest road in the world, a 45-kilometre climb, taking us up to 4,300 metres, or above 14,000 feet at the summit, where the oxygen in the atmosphere is about 60% what you breathe at sea level. If you get to the halfway point, that's really only about 30% of what the energy is expended. The second right. half of the ride is really 70% of what it's going to take to get to the top. Because of the thin air? Or the thin air, the terrain, it gets steeper. When you get on, Andy, yep. Hamish is turning left to right. Yeah. You're going to try and go the opposite way. OK. OK, so don't white knuckle it. OK. Just, you'll be fine. It feels a bit like a bachelor date, doesn't it? <laughs> like, we're in skimpy clothing. It's all that teamwork. It's all you that getting out been, of your comfort zone. You guys have been dating for how long? We've been dating for almost 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Pep talk done. It's time to clip in and get ourselves a trophy. OK. Yep, Ando. Here we go. Just slide forward. Uh, sorry, just... Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Here we go. Oh, no, sorry. Just, uh, nearly. Now you've got to sort of point the toe a little bit. It's a bit tricky. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Bang. Yes, flawless start. Now let's go get ourselves a trophy. Here we go. Stay off in three, two, one, go! And pushing, pushing, pushing. Go, go, go. Up, 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 and off you go, boys. We were away, smiling now and totally oblivious to what lay ahead. These guys are going to shit their pants. <laughs> My quest to get us a fake trophy by riding a tandem bike up a very real mountain was underway. And the first four kilometres were relatively easy, giving our support crew a chance to move on to some other vital things. Thank you for the heated seat. Yeah, turn that I'm on. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crawl back there and get a few donuts. What a day. Beautiful. As the guys got their donuts, I thought I'd dangle that carrot a little more. Isn't it crazy we're riding the same roads? As Brian and Kirk. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. It's going to be a rude awakening when he finds out that it's all been a ruse. I've done all that just because Hamish told me there was this trophy. This is nuts. Well, if by nuts you mean a necessary white lie to inspire my best mate to make it to the top of a mountain and feel incredible about himself, then yes, I agree. Has yours got kilometres elapsed? Yeah. Where are we at? 6.5. We're at 6.5 k's? Yeah. And then we've done over 10 percent. Thank goodness for that, because I was really starting to struggle. That's a good pace you guys have there. You're not you're not working too hard. That's spinning nice. Don't say that. He's working his ass off. I know, but he doesn't know that. He's dying. I know. That look on his face, I'm like, why not? You're not gonna make it to Echo. Oh, not make it to Echo. But Echo Lake's not even halfway. Our support crew called a stop to ensure that we made it even that far. Well done. <laughs> well done. Luckily, Haim had brought along about a thousand energy gels. Sea salt chocolate, campfire s'mores, or vanilla bean. You need uh, to eat. I've eaten a whole granola bar. Okay. Do you want me to, oh, okay. Because you were pointing aggressively a banana at me. <laughs> <laughs> Number one rule Ando in life. A man aggressively points a banana at you, you eat that banana. <laughs> so we pushed off again, with Echo Lake still 12 kilometres away, up some very steep terrain. Things were getting tough. But our support crew were right there supporting us. Andy is fried. Oh, yeah. You can see it. I mean, you can look at it in his face. He's like, what the am I doing? Yeah. But I discovered one upside. How's your bum? Yeah, not bad. Great. The gel is fantastic. Yeah. I might just use it on day to day. Oh, she's smooth as silk. I honestly do use it when I'm at the airport with the kids. Because <laughs> you just get a bit hot and fostered. Yeah. I just use it to stop chafing. Which can really bring apart a family holiday. Nearing the halfway point, we were not doing too bad. We're clipping it. Great cadence, Ando. 
It's a nice cadence they've got going. Just they're looking good. And that nice cadence, whatever that means, had also got us to Echo Lake, but the summit was still a long, long way away. Luckily, I've always got your back, Ando. I suppose I should take this opportunity to tell you I've organised a little bit of motivation there. <laughs> Look who I organised. It's our parents. Can we kick off? <laughs> Ah, oh, thanks, Mum and Dad. <laughs> the scariest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> but the scary distraction had worked, and we made it to Echo Lake. All right, so we are halfway. We're halfway distance-wise. Distance -wise. Wise. Distance -wise. But I bet you haven't even used 30% of the energy it's going to take. This biking thing makes zero sense. You get the same feeling just driving up, don't you? No, you don't. Same vista. Mm, but you didn't earn it. Oh. Do you get a trophy for driving? No, the trophy's what I want. Oh, Why? don't you worry, Ando. We're heading to Trophy Town. Here we go. But just a heads up. Through the gate. The hard part starts now. Here we go, boys. Now the fun begins. Now it's a ride. Here we go. There's some snow. I guess we are getting pretty high. Yep, and we were only getting higher. And as we climbed, that thin air was really beginning to burn the lungs. What's interesting is that Andy is so bought in on it, and it's amazing how strong your will can be when you think there's something at stake. Willpower or not, I was hurting, and the Mount Goliath rest point came just in time. And you can see here, Ando, he's about to get up Don't and care. out of the tree line. Thank you. So if there's not enough oxygen for trees to live, yep. how the hell do you think there's enough oxygen for us? I really wasn't having a good time. I think... I'm definitely bleeding from my ass but he said that's fine. Who said that? The surgeon. Oh, right. <laughs> I just met some guy behind the shed over there. <laughs> well, if that isn't cause for some inspo, I don't know what is. Cue uplifting message from Australian cricket legend Mark Tubby Taylor. You ready? Yeah. Very inspirational hero Graham. Word of warning on Tubbies? Yeah. Uh, I think... As it, like, the request got through to him, I'm not sure he understands what the event is. <laughs> G'day, Andy. I believe that Hamish has challenged you to a mountain bike ride, mate. <laughs> well, if a guy with a nickname of Tubbs can handle a mountain bike, I reckon you can handle one as well, mate. And I reckon you can handle Hamish Blake. Get out there and whip his butt. Cheers. I think he thinks we're against each other. <laughs> but somehow it worked. Andy was back. Look at the boy. Look at him. A little bit delirious, but back, baby! Yes, Tubby, thank you for that! <laughs> <laughs> Whipping spot, Ando! On the whip, Hamish! <laughs> so, thanks to Tubby Taylor and my inspirational tiny white lie, it was back in the saddle. And as we passed 11 and a half thousand feet, even the locals popped out for a look. How epic, man. Haven't looked up for about 15 minutes. I'm sure it is epic. It's worth a, it's worth a look over my left shoulder if you can manage it. Um, no chance. This is where it gets to be a mind bender. You come around one corner and you see this and you see that and you see all the way up there. It's almost better if you can't see. Exactly. I agree. We've been going for four and a half hours to get to this point. We still had this to go and the temperature was dropping fast. Covering my fingers at all. Which brought on a few things you don't normally see on the Tour de France. <coughs> Sorry, losing control of the body. But we forged on, and just as I was sensing Andy starting to enjoy things... Having no fun. Kevin and Dwight pulled us over for an emergency meeting. So, guys, we just got an update. Mm. OK. Apparently, with the weather overnight, it dumped some more snow, and the upper reaches, they may or they may not have the road closed. Just hang on, so you, you could, we could go up there and get stopped? We could. Right. And not make... Oh, no, Tubby Taylor's inspirational work was undone in an instant. We needed to get to my next pre-planned morale boost fast. Only a few more Ks, Ando. All right, motivation stop number two. I think I need some. And it came just in time. You ready to be inspired? Yeah. yeah. This would surely do the trick, cos I'd written an original song about our quest and I'd organised Colorado's leading cover band, Dysfunction Junction, to play it for us. It's called Climbing for Brian, Getting to Work for Kirk. As the sun rises, a sober Mount Evans See two big eyes soaring up to the heavens. This went on for a while. They're climbing for Brian. We're climbing for Brian. Climbing for Brian. Getting to work for Kirk. Getting to work for Kirk. They're going to touch the sky for Australia. No matter how much we're stopping by Brian. Don't 
don't know if they uh, needed the backup, Sam. Yes! yes! Boys, that's for you. Yeah, and I loved it. And we got back on the bike, pumped up, and turned the legs over once more. I give these guys credit. They're kicking ass for... they got a ways to go, though. I know, but I keep forgetting, neither one of them have been on a freaking And that's why I say they're kicking ass. <laughs> yeah. We now had eight and a half kilometres to go, and things were looking up and steep, Woo! which is a kind of up. Woo! After five and a half hours on a tandem bike, we had finally found some confidence. But then, all of a sudden, our biggest obstacle materialised. we got to close the road. They closed the road for safety, just like Kevin and Dwight feared. That's not good. Well, this is <laughs> After all that effort riding and all that effort fake trophy planning, could it really have been for nothing? Red Rose RC, so National Parks have closed it. Yeah, One way or another, right our perfect holiday comes to an end. Next. We'd spent well over six hours on a tandem bike riding higher than a light plane normally flies and found our icy road had been closed. Oh, damn it. So we sat and watched. And then we sat and watched a little bit more. No one really knew what to do at this point. Well, we could pack it all in, say we gave it our best shot and head to the pub for a glass of... Oh, damn it. Oh, oh my God, were we saved? Are you opening the gate? No, there's some icy spots up there, so... I'm going to go up ahead of you guys and check everything out, because I don't want you guys to know hurt. OK. Yeah, but we can open the gate? Yeah, I'm going to open up the gate. Woo! Thank you so much, yep, man. You guys be careful, OK? I'd, totally. I'd give you a high five, but I can't feel my hands. Can't so it's on, yeah. probably not worth <laughs> That's it. That's a long way okay. up here. <laughs> yeah. We were back on, and ahead of our final attempt on the summit, I had one more hit of inspiration for us. Ando, I've got a local motivational speaker. Do us a quick pop. <laughs> Pink, pink. Cancel him. No. <laughs> Ryan! No. Come What's on up? over. What's Andy, up, please. Ryan Van Dusen. How are you Dusen. doing? How you doing? Ryan. How you doing? How's it going, man? I don't even know you, and I'm proud of you already for getting this far. Okay. See? This is a big deal. Full disclosure, having waited in the freezing cold for 25 minutes for the gate to open, I wasn't quite in the mood for Ryan. It's time for the gratitude march. Start thinking about everybody you love mm -hmm. in your life, and that will keep your mind off the pain. I'm psyched for you. Woo! You got this! Right, you got this! Okay. Thanks, yes, man, Jesus! Yes, yes, go, go! You Hold on, it. Andrew! Okay. I'm gonna follow you guys for a little bit. I mustered the energy to get away from Ryan. So it did work. And with oxygen levels dropping by the second, we'd arrived at the dreaded switchbacks. This is a grind. Dwight was spot on. These switchbacks were brutal. Oh. Here we go, a little bit around the corner. Oh. We kept climbing for another thousand foot or so, and things weren't looking great. <sighs> My eyes are doing some funny things. Spots? Uh, yes, spots. That's right, you're only the guy steering us, so it shouldn't be too big a deal. <sighs> Despite being less than 5Ks from the summit, I wasn't sure we were going to make it. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. And as Dwight downed his chips, he could see the writing on the wall. We're at the limit with Andy. But, Ando, when the chips are down, you've got to remember what matters most. Maybe Van Dusen did have a point. No, 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 definitely He might have. It's time for the gratitude march, and that will keep your mind off the pain. We've got to look back and be grateful for the amazing perfect holiday we've just had. Remember almost dying on a bus? Oh, yeah, that was funny. And when we were looking for that treasure? Harold's sticks were tremendous. They were, weren't they? And remember the squirrel brain? Wish I didn't. No, but a great experience. And remember the time we wrote that song for my cat and the other? Absolutely, it was like two days ago. It sure was, Ando. And today, we get a trophy. Because after riding a silly bike for six hours, look up, Ando! That's the summit, baby! Ando, we got this! Andy! Woo! It's the summit! <laughs> did it, man! Powered by naivety, oh. excess energy gels, and one oh. big white lie. Feel like putting your name on a shield? I love that. We had reached the summit. Oh my god. It was amazing to breathe that very thin air. Oh. Despite Ando trying to give birth to something. Oh. Oh. Well, your reaction was pretty weird as well. I just I got some crying. <laughs> yeah, look, it had taken its toll on both of us. But then, the magic moment I had waited for happened. I never thought I'd say this, but 
I'm so glad I did that. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but maybe I'm delirious. No, not listening. You said it. I heard it. We all heard it. You loved it. It was worth it. That was. That's the main point. We'd done it, and it was worth it. <laughs> and we celebrated with one last triumphant drone shot. What a way to end our perfect holiday, man. Well, well, Just... well hey, hey. Aren't we going to go collect a trophy? Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> the trophy. About that. Stand the bike. Yes, she is. Couldn't have done it without you guys. Oh! There she is. <laughs> Little bit of gaffer tape on the back holding it together, I've noticed, but that's OK. <laughs> well, there is only one more thing to add, I guess, to this saga. And that is... That's on me. A small admission that the trophy was made up by me. <laughs> OK, well, I suppose I deserve that. Well, that's a pretty downbeat way to end the show. It is, it is. Maybe if we rewind the show a little bit, a little bit more, and then right back, a little bit more. There you go. Yeah. That's how you end the show, baby. Yeah. What a shot. A lovely show. Look at that, straight from the air. Best of friends. Yes. No hard feelings about the trophy? No. <laughs> Laughed it off. Laughed it off. <laughs> <laughs>